Yeah. yeah. Well. So doing the crossword, I like to be able to write on the paper. I get you can do it on digital, but. Oh, I, I'd I, much I do the New I'd York rather Times use the app on, on my device, and I, I much prefer that. Yeah. yeah. I, can, I carry, so I have hundreds of crossword puzzles that I carry with me when I'm traveling because they're on my iPad. And, you know, it's not so easy to do that. I used to carry a clipboard with a stack of crossword puzzles clipped to it, and it's just much easier to, to use the device. Yeah, right, I guess naturally. it's just part of our Saturday ritual. Anyway. Yep. Yep. I will have slides to show you in a second. Yay! I uploaded the slides, and mm. what do you know? The data tracker is not showing them when I go to the agenda page unless I'm logged in. So I had to switch back to the other thing at the last minute. Oh. After all that, let me share my screen. All right. So it's what nine nine p.m. for you guys. Yep, and you That's should be able to see my see my slides now. I, I see your screen. IETF one hundred eight Madrid virtual. Where are the top? That's the one. And and here's my face. Awesome. Welcome to the extra session at IETF one hundred eight Madrid, in uh, sunny, warm, and and slightly COVID filled Madrid. Uh, let's get straight down to business. So we have the note. Well, of course, as always, I think everybody knows this by now. You are operating at an IETF meeting under IETF rules. Our agenda, as discussed, um, on the, or as sent on the list, has these four items. I had originally put Ken's draft for JMAP Civ on the extra meeting for some reason, but I think it probably belongs in JMAP. We can deal with that in any other business if we get there and decide that it's important to us. And with that said, let me find the slides that do exist. I'm at 4Rev2 and hand over to Alexi. Hello, can you hear me? And now I don't see slides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's almost like I hit the wrong button because oh, I don't know how to use Meet Echo. Yeah, no, that I completely mm -hmm. understand. I struggled with this yesterday. For, uh, for chairs, it's slightly more difficult because you have to flip between, you know, tabs or whatever if you are sharing tabs. And, uh, anyway. Right. Um, so I just, uh, I wrote the slides in anticipation of posting uh, their 17. And then yesterday, I remember that I forgot to post their 17. So I posted it yesterday. Uh, but I will cover this in the slides. Next slide, please. You can skip goals. This is just a reminder. Right. <clears throat> so major changes. Um, we received, I think, a private feedback directly to me and Barry um, about people thought that uh, UID validity will be reset every time you expand your message. Um, so the text, that was never the intent of the text, but the text wasn't entirely clear about that. So I think uh, Barry suggested various editorial changes to address this, and I massage them a little bit. Jump in for a sec. The, um, uh, the comment specifically was that uh, because UID validity description said that um, the a, a combination of, of UID validity and UID uh, identifies a particular message forever. Um, if that message disappeared because it was a fund, then that would mean that uh, that combination of UID validity and UID would no longer be identifying that message, and therefore you'd have to change the UID validity. And we initially said that, well, no implementation has ever interpreted it that way before. But it was certainly easy enough to change some text to make it explicit. So there it is. Right. Thank you for the clarification, Barry. Um, 
The next set of changes is we had a discussion about how to announce a normalized or maybe even edit folder names, mailbox names, uh, on creator name, select, examine, and also append, which I forgot to mention here. Um, and uh, I think we basically settled that there will be unsolicited list response um, in this case. Um, there is an open issue whether it's unconditional or whether, you know, there are conditions to it. Uh, well, I'll get to this in a, one of the following slides. Yeah, I have some um, feedback to give on that um, still to do with mentioning that if object ID is supported by the server, um, it should it should return mailbox ID as part of any unsolicited list as well. But I will write that up for you. Sorry, I haven't got to it yet. Fine. Yeah, that should be a relatively small small addition. So that's fine. Um, then, uh, uh, in relationship to this, there is a clarification that unsolicited lists are not allowed in other IMAP sessions. Um, if people have issues with this, please let me know. Um, and then um, I went through, because we pulled in so many documents, I was checking whether IANA considerations for all relevant registries were either in this document or were referenced. Bron, if you're typing, you might want to mute yourself. Sorry. Um, so yeah, there was, um, basically there was quite a lot of text in list extended about selection options or return options. Um, I decided at this point not to, uh, import the text and just do it by reference, but suggest that this document is, is also used as one of the reference for the registries. Um, I think this mostly editorial, but if people have opinions one way or the other, please let me know. And next slide. Um, yeah, so um, I actually, I know as a redirector, I used to do this on other people's documents, but I finally decided to actually um, check ABNF. And there were a couple of um, ABNF non terminal missing. Um, luckily, they were very easy to fix. So that was that. Um, search. Um, there is extra text saying then body and text search keys don't have to be to use substring search because a lot of people do more fancy searches. We had a discussion um, about providing various options to do this. Um, I think this is uh, overcomplicated, to be honest, and probably hard to implement for people. If people have a very strong opinion about this, please let me know. But I think the current text is uh, allows flex for all current implementations. Um, and the other thing that was done is uh, UTF-8 was already allowed in quoted strings, and now it's allowed in responses, which is uh, free form human readable parts of responses. Next slide, please. Right. Um, I went through XML document and there were actually uh, several um, hidden comments in the document which were there for a long time. So I thought, um, yeah, not all of them are pretty, you know, very significant, but it's probably worth going through them and just uh, making decisions. I think uh, other than the last two issues, I think everything else is, I, I might not have mentioned this ever before. So, but they should be easy, hopefully. Next slide. Um, right, so the document has some text about 
compatibility with earlier versions, which I assume is IMAP 2 bis. Um, and then pretty much everywhere else we uh, rely on UID validity and UIDs. So I suggest, so basically there is text saying if UID next is missing or if UID validity is missing. I suspect that a lot of clients actually wouldn't work if these uh, responses are, are missing. Just need to um, enable IMAP 4 Rev 2 anyway before they can use IMAP 4 Rev 2 behavior. So presumably at that point, the server needs to return these things. Yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing, that because this is explicitly um, enabled, uh, compatibility is not an issue with that. And in general, do we really, does anybody still do IMAP 2 anymore? Well, that's the thing, you know, the same text was in IMAP 4 F1, and I haven't seen any IMAP 2 bis implementations around for a long time. So, hmm. so I think we can burn anything from IMAP 2 at this point. Fine. So um, I think suggestion is basically drop the text saying if they're missing and reward the first quoted sentence saying, well, okay, maybe maybe we'll keep it for for reference, but or maybe drop it. Okay, um, sounds good. Next slide, please. Right. Um, multi. Uh, so, at the moment, document is so we switch from search responses to research responses. Um, however, the document is silent where you can send incremental search responses. So like an example at the top, this is a single response containing all matching UIDs, 2, 10, and 11. And um, at the moment, the document doesn't say whether the second example below, just sending 2 and you know, 10, 11, or sending 2 and 10 or whatever, um, whether the server can actually send responses as it accumulates them, um, and send separate um, e-search responses that the client will have to then amalgamate into a single list. Um, I think for client's implementation is probably it would be better to say that the latter case is not allowed unless people really want it. Um, the example at the bottom, we actually have one other extension which allows separate e-search responses, but they have different correlators. They they apply to different mailboxes, so sending them incrementally. You know, I think it's quite sensible. So proposal for this uh, is to say, unless specified otherwise in an extension, um, one search command should result in one e-search response, basically. Thoughts on this? Anybody? I was wondering whether it should be should or a must. For, for the only one response. If it's a should, then clients need to be able to handle it anyway, so there's no point. Well, I'm not, it not, wouldn't, even, no. wouldn't be a should or a must. It would be, this is how it works. And it, and you just give it as one response. Um, I don't see any real benefit to a server for doing multiple responses. Especially since we've gotten rid of the ability to search multiple mailboxes right it's a separate extension so i think this yeah. is <laughs> still going right. to be fine yeah and this is the example multi-mailbox search is a example at the bottom that would still be allowed yes one one per mailbox yeah. right yeah i think that's the way to go makes clients slightly easier then clients don't have to expect multiple um responses to deal with so all right uh, 
Next slide, please. Um, yeah, not a terribly important thing, but should we say that no slash system flags are going to be defined in the future? Or maybe, you know, maybe it doesn't matter. I think this is the same thing that came up the other day with the idea that that you would create a charter for a working group that said this working group will recharter later. Um, a future standard can override whatever we do here, so it is pointless. Sure, it theoretically can, but if we actually say that, that we don't intend to, yeah, flags, it would be a really bad thing to do because code would now be expecting that. I, what what is the benefit for saying this? Um, I suppose I'm I'm trying to figure out whether people are treating um, slash flags separately and how they treat them if they don't recognize it. But maybe they're just uh... Cyrus IMAP stores them in a separate bit field and has 32 bits available, of which we're using about eight now. I think some for internal stuff and some for system flags. But if we went ahead and defined a bunch more, then we'd just change the data structure in Cyrus IMAP to make more space. And you'd have to yeah. do that, so it's not a big. And deal. you can still use uh, uh, bits for the dollar keywords if you want to, yeah. if you treat them specially. So it's not. Yeah, I, okay. I, I don't really well, see benefit to saying this. There's, it doesn't really simplify implementations. I, I don't think. Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, I agree. Okay, no change is fine. I'll just drop the comment. Next slide, please. Right. Uh, always returning list responses on select examine. Bron, you commented that you would prefer for this to always be returned. single packet anyway so it doesn't actually cost any more bandwidth um, and it means you can always correlate against it I, I think just saying it's always returned makes it much easier that's a good idea yeah I'm not entirely sure about single packet argument because we already have other stuff that were required by extension to send in, in extensions but uh, it might be okay um, yeah, I don't have a strong feeling, I suppose. Select is also fairly expensive and fairly rare, so it's not that big a deal if it's two packets, even. All right. Um, fine. Um, if people have opinions one way or the other, let's do this change. Next slide, please. Um, I think this came from Timo asking if we can actually extend ABNF to allow for message and body part sizes to be 64 bit in fetch. Um, basically, this will only affect clients, possibly. Service don't have to use more than 32 bits. They don't have to accept more than 32 bits. So they will never emit this, but clients will have to handle bigger than 32 bit values. Um, I am a bit ambivalent about this, still not entirely sure how difficult it, um, how difficult it would be to change clients, how much effect it will have on clients. Uh -huh. uh, but on the plus side, this is only after we enable IMAP 4F2, so well, what would clients can. Do, what would a server do now if it were given a mail store that had a large message in it? Uh, I don't think the question, as you Crash. describe, is quite valid in the sense of, uh, 
like my implementation cannot just work with arbitrary mail store so we have api mm -hmm. restrictions internally sure it but will some... not not be able to deliver the message so right so when, when you get... did, if you did a fetch on a message that was larger than 32 bit in size um because some some servers can be given an external mail store and so i don't know what they do with it but uh yeah maybe they say no maybe they maybe they crash who knows yeah undefined i suspect yeah i i don't have a problem with allowing this i think most clients are going to have probably 63 bit but um the same thing that we had for all the other 64 bit discussion clients that have the data type in it will support it that does double memory usage for big mailboxes but potentially if for that's the only, that... only thing you well that's no that's for the the message body part so it adds an extra what 32 bits four bytes of, of storage for the size Each of the body, body. Um, but other than that, it's not going to double the amount of storage because there's heaps of other data being stored. At the Sorry, yes, the no. Body. Well, double the amount of storage for full size elements, as mm. I meant. Yeah. Um, I mean, I at the moment I don't see a problem with this for our mail store because we probably wouldn't support it initially. Uh, I'm slightly worried, but so uh, probably we should just ask for more opinions on the mailing list, just double check. But other than that, I'm OK with that. Cool. Um, yeah, and uh, I think we agree that this is not going to affect the pen. So you can you don't have to deal with injecting these messages at the moment. They can only be delivered externally. That's sort of a bit of a compromise for um, mail stores that couldn't cope with that. All right, next slide. Right, so um, I still have a few core comments from Stefan to, to fix. Uh, most editorial missing references. Um, we also discussed several times section about other recommended mapp extensions and i have next slide about this um the only other uh, thing uh, is no example for body structure because this is a source of bugs um i would request people to send examples if they want their being included in the document um, and probably we should have a um, time limit. So if there are no, no extra examples, then this is just going to be no change and then we'll, we'll move on. Um, next slide. If, if anybody if wants to people have, If yeah. people have examples, they should probably stick them into the IMAP test tool um, so that they actually get tested against as well as just putting them in the document. I think that's probably more valuable. I'm also aware we're running out towards the end of the time that I allocated for this document. Oh, I think this is the last significant um, slide is basically which are the extensions people want mentioned. And I'm sort of not really advocating any of them, you know, maybe Constock, Wikrisync, and maybe Object ID, or the others, I'm not entirely sure. So. I think we need to pull the mailing list to see what people think. If somebody wants to quickly talk about this, uh, that would be great. We've kind of folded fuzzy search in already, which is probably the other, the other thing, um, and possibly special use. It, that's already folded in too, isn't it? So. Yeah, I. Like this is where basically, things. right? The things that we already folded are not on this list. Yeah. So um, should I probably send separate messages on each outstanding issue and including 
this slide and see what people say on the mailing list. That sounds great. All right. Next slide. I think that's probably it. Oh, yeah. We still like. Buddy, can you uh, ping Murray to see where he is with his review? He's not online right now, but I will ask him later. All right, that's fine. I think that's it for this one. So um, I know I kept saying it last time, but I think this is really close to being done now. Excellent. Thank you, Alexi and Barry, for uh, dragging it towards this point. It, I know it's been a huge job. So I, I will. I promise you a review as well for the couple of changes that have been through since I last wrote a review of it. Oh, yes. Um, you did want to do it like one or two weeks last call. So I think you should do it on this version. On 17? Yep. All right. I will, I will do a new last call. I mean, with a that uh, I'll do the changes in the slides, but I think uh, they're relatively minimal. Yep. Well, your call, basically. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, so that gives us till mid-August. Yeah, great. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I believe you're up again soon anyway, but um, let's load up the next one, which is Quota. Yes, there you go. Welcome back, Alexi. Long time no, uh, no see. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Update to quota extension. Next slide, please. Yeah, we can skip that. Next. Uh, right. Changes since 01, which I presented in June. Um, there was text saying if you see storage or message quota resource types and you don't have the corresponding capabilities, they are not what you think they are. Um, I don't think that was probably useful um, in a sense that I'm not sure what else they can be. So I took this text out basically. Um, then set quota now is a separate command with uh, capability quota set. I hope this is not too confusing for, pe for people. Just I use quota set just because uh, all our capability starts with quota. So um, then there was uh, minor alignment with IMAP 4F2. Del uh, deleted messages was changed to deleted. Um, usage resource limit is 63 bits. Added a section on IMAP ACL, and there will be a slide about this. Um, and then I think there was text about IANA considerations. I don't expect many future extensions, but now it says that if you're really going to extend quota itself, you, you'll need an ITF stream RFC. Um, if you want to uh, just register quota resource usage, then it can be any RFC. Next slide. ACL. So um, I did discuss this actually with Ken and Timo, and we do have all slightly different implementations. So I think I will flag it to to the working group. Um, my suggestion of which rights are required and not required is basically get quota takes quota root as a parameter which I think the only way to know it is by doing get quota root on a known mailbox or you know some possibly mailbox to be created. Um, so I suggest it doesn't need any specific rights because it's sort of not possible to tie the root to, to specific mailbox really. Um, but implementation do differ on this. Um, get quota root some implementations require read write if the mailbox exists but it's uh, the document also allows mailbox that not to exist so for example if you want to create a new sub mailbox or 
a new mailbox in existing in one of the you know user or share folder namespaces. Um, it's still allowed to query what the quota will apply to that mailbox. Um, so at the moment, the document says it's either R or nothing. I know it's a bit sort of weird combination because really you don't need anything, I think. But some, if if implementations want to check that an, an existing mailbox name is used, then checking R right on it is uh, basically mailbox read. That's probably okay. Um, yeah. Ken, do you want to talk about any of these, by the way? I see him in the list. Can I uh, Ken, you should be able to speak. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. I don't have anything to add, Alexi. I think you pretty much cover everything. Um, so. I think both you and I need to change our implementations a little bit. So you think you will do this? Sorry, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I sort of do. I don't have a problem doing it unless uh, Bron has a differing opinion since we both work on the same piece of software. Yes, okay. fine, fine by me. Go for it. Excellent. Official permission from the boss, minuted. <laughs> All right, thank Thanks you for that. Yeah, and then set quote is uh, requires admin rights. I think that's fine, basically. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so, at the moment, um, you can have status deleted and status deleted st storage. Uh, you can issue for them to calculate, you know, total number of deleted messages in the mailbox or total size of them. Um, question is, should this only be required if you support the corresponding resource type or should this be done unconditionally? I, I don't think it's particularly difficult to implement either way, but uh, if you only say implement annotation storage, uh, quota type, then it's a bit weird to, to be able to do status deleted, for example. So I'm I'm slightly undecided about this. Do people have an, an opinion? I think returning nil for any type that's requested that you don't do is a reasonable approach there. So you don't fail the command, but there's no data available for it. Okay, that will um, create slight complications for clients if they really want this information, but I suppose that's no different from I'm a for a one. Well, yeah, it's just like if you don't support it, this extension. I'm probably okay with that, um, but this is the new suggestion. Uh, I need to incorporate this in the ABNF. Any other comments on this? What are the alternatives? You'd either return zero or you would fail it with bad command. Yeah, which is kind of... Um, I think either of them are worse. Yeah, it is. All right, so I, I think the suggestion is return nil if you don't support the resource type and they only require to be supported if you support the corresponding resource type, yes? Yep. Okay, fine. Next slide. Um, this is the issue I discussed in June. Um, over quota has two variants. Um, for example, if you have one mailbox selected and then you are move message to another mailbox, you can separately return information saying that your current mailbox is over soft quota but not by not specifying the tag. And then you can include the tag by saying your destination mailbox, the one you just co copied or moved message to, is over quota. Um, unfortunately, there is a syntactic issue with this uh, because response calls are not allowed close square bracket. So, two ways to solve this. 
either drop this uh, over quarter space tag variant um, or we can change the tag definition in IMAP 4F2 to disallow square brackets. Uh, I don't know if anybody used them in tags. That's sort of hard to prove one way or the other. I'm really happy to remove them from tags in IMAP 4F2. Once you enable IMAP 4F2, you promise not to send them in tags. Done. So you, you're basically saying that over quarter space tag is still useful. Well, I'm saying oh. regardless. <laughs> Re okay, okay. Okay, I, I can pose this question for oh, four F. Actually, should over quota just return the quota root that's over quota? Yeah, but then it has the same issue because quota root can it's a string and it can can contains anything. Mm. Yeah, true. and then it will be allowed to contain uh, closing square bracket. So, yeah. It's right, like it's bad. one of those things I wish that IMAP generic syntax was slightly more generic. Uh, yeah, but, if it was a real structured format, but we that ship is well sailed. Yeah. Yep. ACAP did it right, but then again, where is ACAP? Mm. Okay, so... Um, I'll ask the two questions separately. One is for IMAP ref2 about disallowing close bracket and saying this is possible use case. And then separately, if people want to keep over quarter space tag or not. Next slide. Yeah, I think this is uh, other than basically, uh, there are two small changes that I need to do. Otherwise, it's done. All right, so if you want to publish a new draft with those changes, and then I'll do a working group last call on that, I guess. Okay. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Cool. All right. According to our notes, next is me. With Civ Mailbox ID, I uploaded this just today um, a couple of times because I missed a couple of bits the first time. Thank you, Alexi, for your feedback on it. Um, for those of you who haven't read the draft, it adds a new Mailbox ID option for Acquire. And with that, you can add a parameter to file into. And anywhere that you're using FCC, you can also add Mailbox ID. If you do that, then it will try and find a mailbox that has an exactly matching mailbox ID to the one you specified. And if so, that overrides whatever other parameters were given. Um, so in particular, if you're combining it with create, it will first look for the mailbox with its mailbox ID. If that fails, it will then look for mailbox with the name. If that also fails, it will create a mailbox with the name. Um, and the draft quite specifically says that you can't set the mailbox ID from that. So it will create the mailbox with the name, but it will not give it the same mailbox ID certainly is not guaranteed to um, and that's for security so you can't set mailbox ids because they're normally server only created anyway the documents there i believe it is ready for working group last call already um, so i'll ask my co-chair to do that since it is a draft written by me uh, it's been implemented in cyrus imap for a couple of years and we're using it in production at fastmail it's basically that i'd didn't get around to actually finishing the, I made the call for adoption and then didn't get around to actually finishing it, adopting it into the working group, which is why it has sat dead for a couple of years. Um, please read the spec and give feedback. Any comments? Looking forward for the last call. Do they have anything cool. else? I think this should be just published, but you know, let's get it done. Awesome. Uh, and last item is Civ EAI. Stefan is not able to join us today and did not have any slides for us, but he did say, please do read the draft and give him feedback about whether it is on the right track or not. Um, and he will 
go back and revise it based on feedback. So please read the draft, give feedback on the list. With that, we are now basically back on schedule, um, despite having not gone exactly to our plan. So just hopping over into the data tracker. Um, is it group or groups? There we go. Um, we have milestones. Adopt quite a bit done. Done, done. Um, Civ snooze, we don't have a draft for that yet, I don't believe, Ken. Um, let me let you in. Yeah, I had promised to write that draft up uh, during our interim, and I believe I did, but never submitted it. So that's on me. I'll get that. All done, right. Well, uh, I'll get that done today, or at least by uh, tomorrow. Cool. I'll do a call for adoption on that. Um, other than that, our documents listed here are ready to be submitted. Um, Civ AI obviously will need to have work done on it, and so we should probably set a milestone for that. Uh, anyone have any opinions about when we expect that to be done by? I think realistically probably end of the year is reasonable, would be my I guess. I'm looking about Christmas, yeah. And uh, I've seen the, the new version posted, but I haven't read it yet. So. All right. Uh, other than that, we're basically out of documents at this point. We don't have anything else listed to work on. Um, so question of whether we recharter or whether we go quiet for a little bit. Any, I guess we'll, we'll deal with that when we get there. That is still set at a reasonable time. Do we have any other business in the remaining eight minutes of this meeting? Yeah, Bron, for the minutes, I, I had a question, it went past me. What was it that you wanted to create a new milestone for at the end of the year? Uh, yes, so I'll create a new milestone for submit EAI uh, to ISG, just to use all the acronyms, uh, for December 2020. And I will update the other milestones to be uh, the times that we have already agreed for those documents during this call. So oh, CVI is a personal draft, but it's not a document. Yes, uh, I, I will check whether I've done a call for adoption. If not, I will do that call for adoption and I'll update the call for adoption milestone to be August. Sounds good. All right. Uh, I will see many of you over in the JMAP call in a few minutes. Thank you for your time. Uh, see you there.